How's it going you guys? So today I'm going to talk about removing the butterfly valve which is located right here inside the intake. Now I'm going to show you a really quick clip of what the butterfly valve looks like as it's activated. So let's take a look at the butterfly valve and see what it does when you turn on the car. As you can see, it's shut off. So let's take a look at the butterfly valve and see what it does when we hit the throttle. Basically, when you hit the throttle, the butterfly valve opens up and allows more air to enter the intake system. And what you typically see is that it's, uh, people find it quite restrictive. Um, and you'll see that in a moment once we remove the air box and the aftermarket cold air intakes and the short ram intakes they actually don't have that uh, butterfly valve at all so, so let's go ahead and start taking it off and to begin you use a 10 millimeter on this uh, clamp right here for the intake tube go ahead and slide this off disconnect your mass airflow sensor like so you can unclip it from here move this aside and if you can move this boot off the, the intake now there are a couple of clamps that I'll show you in a moment so there's three clamps that you want to remove the first one is right here the second one is right in here actually you can remove this off your air box set that aside and that reveals your other clamp you can undo this and your last clamp is right here in this corner so you unhook that once this boot is off um, you have these little uh, guidelines right here pull it off the guideline and just pull from this end up And then you have two hoses right here. Disconnect those two hoses. So this reveals your intake assembly. And this is how you replace the air filter as well. Now if you take a look, this is your butterfly valve right here. And it's connected by this intake um, vacuum line. You can disconnect this intake vacuum line like so. Set this aside. Now you can remove this by pulling it straight up. There are clips. So go ahead and pull it straight up like so. Now the butterfly valve is removed. So basically it's freeing up this much room uh, going into your intake system all the air is going in here and it's not being restricted by by this over here and this works with this vacuum line going into your intake so if you take a look at it from this angle right here let's actually put it back in really quick so when this is closed this is normally closed and air travels through through this port right over here and then at higher rpms the engine vacuum opens this valve up so it allows air to go through here and through here and through under here but you still have um, all this stuff right here that prevents more air from entering the engine so you can go ahead and remove that set that aside now this vacuum line you can ask what we're going to do with this one you could place this back over here a used lift bolt works quite well so you want to plug it up with a bolt right here and go ahead and press it in as much as you can so installation is the same as removal you want to just leave this right here you can put a zip tie around this to prevent it from going through but if you use the lift bolt uh, it's, it's just not going to come out there at all, so you're perfectly fine. 
and this is not going to get sucked into the engine or anything like that. So just remove these uh, vacuum lines to the side. Make sure your clips are all clear. There's no obstructions. And then you lay your intake back on. You can put it through the tube side first or just lay it in. Put mark it on these, put it inside the grooves, and it slides in. Move your intake tube up. You can slide your intake tube back on. Make sure it's secure at the bottom as well. Now reconnect your vacuum lines. There's a small one. And the larger one. There's a small one. There's a larger one. Now you connect your uh, clip on this side back on. Slide the solenoid back into its slot. And tighten this clamp. Double check all your vacuum lines. Then you connect this clamp in the back. You want to tighten up your boot clamp. You don't want to uh, get any air leaks past this master flow sensor. If you do, you're going to have a lot of uh, issues. The car is not going to run well at all. And then the last step is connect your on first and then clip it in. All right, so that's it. Let's start the car and see what it sounds like. Alright, so that concludes the video. Again, this is for track use and off-road use only. This isn't um, legal to do on the street. So if you're going to be driving on California streets, you want to put that part back in. And we're going to do that right now because we live in California. So I just wanted to make this uh, video as a demonstration uh, for those that want to use a stock airbox on the track um, or for racing applications off-road. So there you go. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video.